everyone. It saddens me that we in Balliol Bay and Glennon cannot meet together for our fortnightly Bible study or our home life group. So I welcome you here to our Wednesday in the Word. This will be a devotional Bible study where we'll read the Bible. I'll ask you at some points during the video to stop and pause to think and discuss over the verse or over the question that I pose to you. And I hope and pray that this will be a useful time for you and for me as we will be strengthened together in the gospel as we meet around his word. Well, Wednesday in the word, what do we want to do for these next number of weeks? What's the typical response to the question, how are you? Well, in Ireland, it's, I'm fine. No matter what the topic is, be it work, family, school, any parts of our life, if somebody asks, how are you? We say, I'm fine, or it's going fine. But what if we were to ask you the question, well, how are you spiritually? How would you answer that question? Well, Carl Larferton, the man who wrote this little book that we're basing our studies on together, he said this. Some of us are worried when we don't need to be. Other of us are confident when we have no reason to be. And most of us know we should be growing as Christians, but aren't sure what it means exactly or how to go about it. Some people say that, well, my spiritual life, well, that's a personal question. That's between me and, and God. That's no one else's business as, as I want to do my own thing in, in my faith. Well, we talk about our targets and progress in the world of work when we need to report to the boss. Sometimes we like to compare our own results within the gym and slimming world, asking about each other of how the weight loss program's going. And we all have a concern for people when we hear that they go to the doctor, asking how did they get on or how things are with them. Well, followers of the Lord Jesus need to have a concern for the spiritual life in others to see growth and strength and vitality. The Apostle John, in his third short letter, he said, Dear friends, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. So over the course of these next number of weeks, we're, we're going to spend Wednesday in the Word using Carl Lafferton's book, Spiritual Health Check, giving us 16 Bible devotional studies to help us grow in our faith in the Lord Jesus. We want to diagnose our own health and know where exactly we are in our faith. Our studies will then point us to all that God has given us for a healthy diet to help us grow. And ultimately, during our time, we'll constantly meet the doctor whom God has provided for us to help us flourish in our faith. So grab a Bible, grab a cuppa. If you want, get a pen and a notebook. Sit down. This is not the doctor's waiting room. Don't be nervous, but let's be excited to share a spiritual health check together. So how would you describe your spiritual health? How are you getting on in your Christian walk? If you were to draw a line between 1 and 10, 10 being really thriving and 1 being barely surviving, where would you place yourself on that scale? Well, before we reach a diagnosis, we need to ask an important question. What actually is a spiritually healthy Christian? And before we get to understand where we are spiritually healthy, every human being begins at a very same starting point. Can I ask you to turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2? This is a, a letter that Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus. And it tells us a great deal of what we were really like before meeting the Lord Jesus. Because it says in Ephesians Chapter 2 and verse 1, as for you, you were dead in your trespasses and sins. So before becoming 
a Christian and entering into saving faith with Christ, Ephesians 2.1 gives us a stark picture of what it means to be outside of Jesus, that we have an alienation from God, that before meeting with Christ, we are dead. We are lifeless. We are without being or spiritual breath. And Paul continues that picture in Ephesians 4.18, where it says that we were separated from the life of God. How would people who wouldn't be from a faith background react to that sort of statement? How would people normally view themselves as human beings? Take a moment to think about that. The picture that Paul gives us in Ephesians chapter 2 is completely opposite in people's thinking of what they think about themselves. Everybody in society thinks that they're good, decent, that the world is their oyster, the world is there to have for themselves. And we do need to realise that every human being was made in the image of God and everyone can display wonderful acts can display great abilities, but spiritually, we can do absolutely nothing. But what is the good news? What is the gospel truth? Well, further on in Ephesians 2, verses 4 and 5, it says, But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in sin and transgressions. It is by grace that you have been saved. So God performed a miracle in our hearts that the very life of God works in us to bring us from death into life. Our cold, dead, lifeless hearts and lives have by God's grace been made alive. So being a Christian is not about being a nicer person. It's not about being a decent human being. It's not about being involved in some nice religious routine or activities. It's about being a brand new person. And this is just staggering because Paul says in Romans chapter 8 verse 6 that God raised us up with Christ. So that when someone becomes a Christian, that very same power that raised Jesus from the grave is the very same power that raises us from spiritual death to life. So I want to ask you a question. How would you explain to someone who is not a Christian what life is like without Christ and what it means to have Christ? We'll pause and have a think and discussion about that. The great hymn, And Can It Be, by Charles Wesley, puts it beautifully. Long my imprisoned spirit lay, fast bound in sin and nature's night. Thine eye diffused a quickening ray. I woke the dungeon flamed with light. My chains fell off, my heart was free. I rose, went forth and followed thee. Because of the gospel, our lives are changed. We deserved punishment. By grace, he gave us forgiveness. We deserved the consequences of sin, but by grace, he shows us mercy. We deserve wrath, but by grace, he gives us relief. We deserved hell, but by grace, he ushered us into heaven. We deserved misery. By grace he gives us hope. And we deserved guilt and shame. But by grace he gives us glory and honour. Well, how is your spiritual health? What is your spiritual health like? Well, in Christ, you're alive. So then let's get to the question. What actually is a spiritually healthy Christian. 
Well, I want you to turn with me to Romans chapter 8. And in those words, we're going to find in verses 28 through to 31, something that will help us to check our spiritual health. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? So my question to you right now is, who does God work for the good of? Look for two things at the beginning of verse 28. Well, who does God work for the good of? Well, verse 28 tells us, for those who love him and those who have been called according to his purpose. So here's a rock solid promise from God that God works for those who love him and live out the purposes that he calls us into. So a spiritually healthy Christian is someone who embraces this extreme hope that God is for those who love him. That when he called us from death to life, so our love then sprang out for him. That a love and a heart began to beat towards the Lord and his purposes. And God is determined. He is unfaltering and unwavering in his plan in bringing my life into the pattern of his will. And what is God's will? Well, in the New Testament and in even the Old Testament, we see that there's a lot of things about God's will. But here in Romans chapter 8, what has God destined or decided he will do for those people? Well, turn with me to the beginning of verse 29. It says, he predestined us to be conformed to the image of his son. So spiritually healthy Christian is a person who loves God, but also a spiritually healthy Christian is someone who's growing to be more and more like Jesus. Pause for a moment and ask yourself the question, what was Jesus like when he walked this earth? What was his character and attributes? Spend a minute thinking about that. Well, we can see in the New Testament whenever Jesus came to this earth as he interacted with people, as he drew alongside individuals, we see that Jesus was kind, compassionate. He's also brave and courageous when he was standing against the rulers of the day. He was loyal to his friends. He was wise in his counsel and he was thoughts, thoughtful to the needs of the people that he met. How do you feel about being like that? If we are called to become more and more like him, how do you feel about displaying those characteristics? Well, you might say to yourself, well, Stephen, you know, that's not me. I wish I could say that I was like that, but I'm not, and I'm so discouraged. Well, remember, people, people who love him and follow after him, God is for them. So child of God, God is for you today. And your love for him will then produce a desire to pursue his will and to be conformed to the likeness of the Lord Jesus. Jesus has moved in. Fear and shame have been given their eviction notice. They're no longer with you. Your life is not a disaster. And your life can display his glory as you love him and you fulfill the calling that he has placed upon your life. 
And you might say to yourself, but Stephen, I'm the exception. I don't see that happening for my life. Well, can I graciously give you a kick? Well, that doesn't honour Jesus. That sort of mindset does not honour what he has done for you. Because, folks, we do not live by appearances. We live by promises. Because let's read this again. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. Can I encourage you over the next wee while to maybe turn to the Gospels and write down words which describe the character and behaviour of Jesus and seek the Lord prayerfully to help you grow and to display the spiritual attributes for your health and well-being in Christ. Well, can I now just draw our time together to a brief close by turning with me to 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Just turn there with me. And we're going to spend a little moment there. Let's read this uh, together. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are the children of God. And what we will be, has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Spend a minute answering this question. When will we be completely confirmed into the image of Christ? So when will we be confirmed into the image of Christ? Well, verse 2. Dear friends, now we are the children of God and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. We will be like him when we see him. Spiritual health is just being like Jesus. And until he returns, we will not have that full spiritual health. We still struggle with sin. We still battle with temptation. But God is working for our good, for our Christ-likeness in everything. Christ is working in our Christ-likeness when things are going well. But he's also working for our Christ-likeness in the things that are not going so well. He's working for us in the normal times and he's working for us in the lockdown times. He's working for us when our businesses are booming and Christ is working for us when our businesses are struggling. Christ is working for us when our relationships are loving and compassionate. But Christ is also working for us when our relationships are strained and distant. None of us are perfectly Christ-like, but God is at work to make us more Christ-like. <laughs> you might feel spiritually a little bit flabby. You might spiritually feel a little bit of out of breath. And maybe spiritually you feel that you lack strength. But Romans chapter 8 verse 31 changes everything. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Folks, there's no room for half-hearted faith. God is calling you and he's mapping out his purposes for you. The spiritually healthy Christian responds in love for him and following his will. Are you wanting this in your life? And are you eager for him to make you more and more like Christ? This is the end of our first devotional Bible study on being a spiritually healthy person. And just to draw this to a close, I want you to listen to a song 
by Emmanuel Worship. It's a church in Nashville, Tennessee, and they've actually written music for the whole of chapter 8 in the book of Romans. And here is this section from verses 31 through to 34 and 5. And I want you to listen to these words in a time of prayer and response. And I hope to see you again next Wednesday. If God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave Again.